Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today you join me in the farm office. Me and Toby have spent a day down here doing some editing, recording a couple of videos, and people have obviously asked for a updated farm tour. So that is what this is. This is my office work area. You might recognize the background from a few different videos. I can sometimes come down here and work. I've got CCTV on the TV next to me so I can see what everyone's getting up to at the garage. And when we've got the MIT Center, I'll be able to keep an eye on that as well. Toby's editing over here. He's working on a TV at the moment. He's got quite the setup over there. But we'll head on out and we'll see what's kicking around the farm at the moment. Some of the container you might have seen before. So we've got a little tea area with the microwave and our very noisy fridge. Merchandise here, so if we do all the merchandise, this is probably where I box it all up for you. But more importantly is the cars and everything else that's down here, so let's head on out and see what's happening. Now I obviously assume everyone's more interested in the cars that are down here and that side of it, but obviously the farm as we call it encompasses the very big, very expensive horse riding arena that I've had put in here where Sophie trains her horses. It is 25 meters by 40 meters. It's massive and it's covered in automotive carpet. It's quite fitting for who I am, obviously. Uh, the farm actually goes down here, this track we've put in, so you can get out the other end. There is just grazing out. There's only a couple of acres. It's not huge, but you know, something I've always wanted. So it's nice to have. And then our new stable blocks, which do have a couple of horses in and lots of hay that by the time this comes out, you may have seen us mucking around with in a weekly video, but then again, you may not, I'm not sure. He's a Connemara, I think they call it. And he's a very friendly boy. And then we've got Rocky over here. It's one of the first horses we had, what Sophie got. And he is a horse. I don't know what type really. What type of horse are you? A cheeky one. Then you've probably seen my farm gym which is looking very dusty actually partly due to lack of use partly because of all the bedding shavings and things that Sophie puts down for the horses that comes up over I've got my little buggy that you probably have seen in previous videos the one that's always breaking and is still broken at the moment mainly because I can't find the enthusiasm to try and fix it really it's only a choke cable that's broken on it this time, but I'll get round to it at some point. So obviously this, this is the yard, as we call it. Uh, we don't call it that. I don't know why I said that. This is the yard. This is the hard surface where everything gets parked, basically. And I guess we'll walk down one side and come back up the other. So obviously the new green machine still needs some work, needs some more polishing up to bring its colors back. Then we need to get a sign written and other bits and pieces and probably redo the wheels. But we've got the beacon and everything on now. It's been remapped. It's had a speed limiter removed, all that good stuff. So that one there, black one's out at work at the moment as is the Navara and the other trailer. So we're still not quite organized because we've got a dead car here in the way really. But it'd be nice to have both trucks, the Navara, both trailers and the trailer secured, bolted to the fence or something. But you know, Everything takes time, doesn't it? But we're getting there. Then we have, we've probably talked about this before. Probably the last time I walked around the farm and said about having dead cars and whatever. This was here, needs a turbo and a timing chain. It went over to the garage, they were gonna do it. It's just a case of time and priorities and we prioritize other stuff. It's just not gonna get done in the immediate near future. So it's back down here waiting on that opportunity. I will lose thousands if I just get rid of it as it is. So we are gonna do it, it's just, Wait until we've actually got time to do it. Then we've got the Porsche 911, which has now been fixed, has an MOT on it. Um, we, yeah, we weren't gonna put an MOT on it. We were just gonna do the bits that were uh, down to us, which was an oil or a coolant leak, I think, from an oil cooler. We changed that and the emissions, he thought something was wrong, the exhaust is really rusty. Well, we fixed a couple of leaks on it, sent it across, ended up putting an MOT on it. And just waiting for that to be collected now, but it's gone ever so quiet ever since we said it's ready to go. Then we have a warranty nightmare over here. Again, we didn't do a specific video on this, but you might have seen it in a weekly. The, I would say very nice, but the Mercedes S-Class that we had in, 
the one that we sent to a customer over in Wales, it had ABS issues. They sent it back, we gave them a courtesy car, it came back, I think it did the same thing again. And then took it back, it was working fine for a good few weeks. And then one of the front airbags, or the front airbags, have collapsed, so it now looks like this. Um, this will go over to the garage very soon to get diagnosed and get this sorted. Um, it can't, well, I say it can't be anything major. It probably will be in the terms of expense, but hopefully it can't be too complicated. It's probably just a blown bag or a valve or something. So hopefully it won't be too tricky to fix, even if it is expensive, probably. Then we've got my high mileage BMW. We did have someone come in, pay a deposit on this because they wanted it for their other half. But then I think maybe the other half changed their mind or they changed their mind. Whatever happened, it's still here. Um, I might even take this home today, actually. It is a really nice car. It's, you wouldn't believe it's got 178,000 miles on it. But the reason I'm selling it is I need something to tow with as my own personal car, really. So it's here at the moment. It is on our website, barometers.co.uk, but it's just here. It's like overflow stock, basically. Then we have a KA that Sophie is selling at the moment. You might have seen, record so many videos, I can't remember what's happened in what video, but she bought this and didn't see that it had had a bit of a boff down the side here. So those of you who saw that in the pictures where she'd bought this, into the rear quarter as well. I mean, it needs a door probably, and Dead Man's not getting that out. So I think she's gonna try and sell it as it is, cheaply, for someone who's not that bothered about the cosmetics, but it's still here at the moment. It's a shame because it's actually quite low mileage. Really nice car, drives really well. Just didn't spot that. I can't judge her on that because I've done exactly the same thing on a Corsa recently, which has got a caved in wing. It looked lovely, just didn't look at all the pictures. And yeah, it's easily done with online auctions, downside of them. What car is this, Toby? The best one of all. The best one of all, he says. This is Toby's old Polo, which again, we sold. And then we had to buy back because you would have seen a video of this, Toby will put it here where I was driving this and I couldn't find first or second gear very easily. Uh, he, the chap bought it, he wasn't bothered about that. But then he decided he was bothered about it and wanted to return it. So we bought it back. The linkages have been fixed now. So actually it goes into gear like butter. Toby should have had that done years ago, probably. And it is back up for sale again. So probably by the time this video has gone out, you know, any of this stuff could have gone. It all moves around pretty quickly, but yeah, it's back here at the moment. I don't think it'll hang around for too long. It's a good car, really. I don't think it's even as tappity as it used to be, but who knows? Then a little 208, another one for Sophie, but another one that's got a ding in the winglet. Does it stop it from being a good car? Well, not really for someone who wants a cheap, you know, very cheap to tax, very cheap to run. I think it's the little 1.4 diesel, I think. Um, should be a good little car for someone, although she hasn't sold it yet. I know why, because it needs a clutch. So I don't think she's got that for sale yet. Again, waiting for time to get in the workshop and get a clutch. So we're waiting on more workshop space, more workshop staff to get that done. Then we've got two cars which belong to Josh. We've got his 190E, uh, which is a one owner car. She bought for not very much money. In fact, if you wanna see how much, there's a video here where we took that out. It's actually a really nice little car, but he needs to sell it, get it gone. Everyone's got the 4 by 4 ring bug. You'll probably find out why in a minute. And I think he wants to sell that along with his, what's this, an E39 5 Series BMW. Also, he's now decided he's going to sell this. This was his sort of daily. In fact, I got this for him from auction. So it's a 525D, I think. And he had a 525i saloon before. And this was going to be more economic, etc. But then he got a C63, which is over here. We'll have a look at it in a minute. Don't look now. So yeah, that'll be up for sale. So if you want either of these, check out Josh on Instagram. His handle is at C63 underscore gray, G-R-A-Y. We might be able to have a little deal with him. Then we've got a little Clio Estate. I always quite, I don't know why, but I quite like the look of the Clio Estate. I think it's more interesting than a Clio hatchback. Toby's giving me very funny looks, but it's different, isn't it? It's a bit different. Uh, yeah, that's just one that Sophie's trying to sell. Came from auction, it's a nice thing. I think it's got reasonable miles on it, 80, 86 or something. Uh, she's asking 2,500 or something for it. So that's not crazy. And then the 500 pound Audi TT, the 225, is it 225? It is, isn't it? Not 220. 225, BAM engine, Quattro, 1.8 turbo, thinging, all singing, all dancing. 
we bought for 500 quid, but it's pretty rusty underneath. So it's going to need a lot of TLC. We might keep that as a track car, maybe, but yeah, if someone comes along and wants to give me a grand for it, 750 quid, whatever, then um, we'll sell it on. I suppose I should say now, I still haven't made up my mind about a part exchange group on Facebook. I have made one. And if you want to join, then please feel free to join. The Facebook group is called Shifting Metal PX Group, I think. Um, Toby will put the name to exactly what it is and we'll put the link in the description as well. So you can check that out. And occasionally there might be a few cars like that, for example, that we'll just put a small mark up on. And if you want to come and get it, you can come and get it. We'll describe it as it is. We'll maybe, maybe do a walk around video, things like that. Some stuff Sophie might put on there and she might be asking nearer retail money for because we would have checked it over, etc. But you might still think it's a bargain. Some stuff will just be buy it as is, trade, whatever. So yeah, I don't know how that's going to work out, but a group does exist. If you want to join it, please do. And you can always message me on there as well and say hello. So Shifting Metal, Part Exchange Group, I think, or PX Group. Then we got the old Sterling Eccles caravan. You would have seen that in one of the weekly episodes. That's there, charging away, keeping, keeping ready. A lovely bit of kit that is. Then up through the middle here is staff cars. These aren't mine. I'm not responsible for these. This is Macaulay's Mercedes, uh, which is, uh, what is it? It's a C-Class of some sort, isn't it? But I don't know what. It's a diesel. I know that much. Then we've got Josh's C63 V8 Whip. Um, that obviously he bought from me and it's quite a, quite a small, quite a small, quite a cool number plate. I was saying small because it says little willy club at the bottom. Um, don't know why that isn't his Instagram handle V8 whip. You would have thought that made more sense. Then we've got Toby's glorious Mark six golf, two litre TDI. What a beauty that is. He'll be keen to show you, uh, his funky new wheels he's put on there. Look at those bad boys. Changed the look of it completely. He could do with cleaning it, I'll be honest. I washed it last night. You washed it last night? Yeah. Not well. No, I know. Look at that. That was coming here. No, this wasn't coming oh, here. Yeah, it's because I did it at a garage. You did it at a garage, yeah, with the old scratchy brush and you didn't really do all of it, did you? So, yeah, customer cars. I only I just parked them there this morning. I was having a bit of a tidy around. To be fair, Josh and Macaulay tidied this yard up. It was just cars everywhere. And they've now parked them a bit neater again. It's amazing how much space you've got. And I just parked stuff, stuff in the middle. I think that works quite well. Let's head around here and then see what else is a bet. So you'd probably call this like depression corner. This is death row. This one actually is not too bad, but it's just, just crap. It's a park exchange. I think we gave about 400 quid for it, 2009. Uh, what is it? It's a 116i, I think. I don't know if you better see in there, Toby, but it's just filthy. It's just grim. Pretty sure that's hay and stuff in the back. Anyway, take my word for it. It's uh, full of crap. In fact, the little sort of cubby hole in the top's got like dental fix for dentures and old toothpicks and things in it proper revolting. We should probably try and do a video on this, uh, but it wouldn't be a turnaround video because I don't want to, I don't want to subject anyone to cleaning it. It's 189,000 miles and it's run out of MOT. So yeah, it's just, there's, there's money in it. There is money in it. If you can be willing to put in the effort and clean it up and whatever, then there's, you could easily probably stick a grand on that with an MOT on it and whatever. But uh, yeah, there's no, no enthusiasm to do that currently. We've got so much other work like for example, Volkswagen Golf Plus. This is a really nice thing, low mileage, full service history. I think it's one of those things where it might even be like a doctor owner or something like that. But the DSG gearbox needs something done to it. Can't remember what it was. Something with a mechatronics unit, if that means anything to you. It doesn't mean much to me, but we just need to, to in order to save ourselves about 500 pounds, if we take the gearbox off ourselves and take it to our friends at the gearbox place, uh, gear change, they would do it for about 450 quid-ish, let's say. But if we want them to take it out and whatever, it's like a thousand pounds. So again, waiting on workshop time, get it out, get them to sort it, get it back in, and then we can sell it on. Then we have the Suzuki Ignis Sport. It's on 174,000 miles that I bought for, I think, 400 quid. I've actually done quite a bit of work on it, and I need to speak to the mechanics and find out exactly what, because I think all it needs now is a CV 
joint, maybe some tires, and we could put it in for an MOT. It was obviously going to want an plate again, but you know, minor things. It could be cleaned up and we could use it. Yes, it's never really going to be worth much money or make me anything back, to be honest, because 174,000 miles and probably a lower mileage one would only be worth about £2,000. So um, why did I do that? I don't know. These are the things that keep me awake at night, asking myself why I did that sort of thing. But I quite like it. I just think they're cool. So I am keen to get that fixed, sorted as well. And it just goes on and on around here, unfortunately, things that need work. This failed its MOT. It was only a cheap thing. Again, maybe we paid about 15, 1600 quid for it. It failed its MOT. I think it needs like a rear subframe or something. Something that was quite in depth with getting done. Rear or maybe front subframe bushes or something. I can't even remember now. I'm sure you'll look it up and check it out. And in fact, you know what? Should we have a look and do a vehicle score check? That way we'll find out how it scores, which I imagine will be terribly. All we've got to do is enter our registration, Charlie Victor 60 Zulu Foxtrot Delta. Check vehicle, it's gonna give us a score from one to 999, depending on how good it is, based on its MOT history, age, mileage, all those sorts of things. Right, so it scores 79, really bad. And the reason for that is no current MOT, over 20 comments on recent MOTs, over two failed comments on recent MOTs, last MOT failed, it's really bad, okay? Among our other things we can do, estimates, common problems, vehicle details, etc. we can go to the MOT history and look at the last fail. So, I actually only had two fail items, front subframe corroded and seriously weakened, offside rear shock absorber has a seriated fluid leak. There are quite a few other advisories, but actually none of them look too bad. Rear subframe corroded, but not seriously weakened. So it probably wants a front and a rear subframe. Uh, it's, not, it's not crazy actually, but it's just time consuming with these because it's a lot to take apart and put back together. So yeah, it's just, it's something that's put us off doing it. It's gonna put off anyone wanting to buy it because there's a lot of work to do. And in terms of buying, if you are gonna buy a car, highly recommend a vehicle score. You can use their vehicle checks. Uh, the Salvage Plus report is only £2.97 and the Ultimate report is £8.97. Don't forget to use my code. Oh, just a little thing. Normally, I would say use my code SHIFTINGMETAL15 and you will get 15% off. And I'm sure as you're aware with these affiliate links, whoever is using their code, they get a little bit of a kickback from the thing as well. So we earn a little bit of commission from each one that we sell. And I thought I'd rather the viewers have the discount so I said, is there any way we can take that from me and give it to the customer? So I have agreed an exclusive discount, which is 20%. You can use either code, Shifting Metal 15 or Shifting Metal 20, but you are gonna get 20% off. On the ultimate report, rather than being £7.62 with the old code, it's now £7.18, saving you about 45p. I think it's worth having, and hopefully you guys can make use of it. So make sure you let everyone know, Shifting Metal 20 will get you the cheapest discount going. Back to the video. So again, waiting for workshop time. This is our old smart car. We used to have this sign written up with carsboughtformore.com. We used to drive it around the area, all that sort of thing. We use it for an MOT runner. It has now developed a gearbox fault, so it just won't select gear. I think the selector fork punches a hole in something. It probably needs a gearbox. That's okay though, because right here is another one I bought. I thought we'll fix this one, I'll buy another one, and we'll have two nice little smart cars I can sign right up for when we've got a new MOT center running back and forth to collect MOTs, drop them off between Barrow Motors and the new service center. And this one's got a really good gearbox. It's just got a knackered engine, which you've probably seen in the Barrow Motors Weekly. It's just got a lot of bottom end knock. So one needs an engine, that one, and this one needs a gearbox. We could mate them and have one good one and one awful one. <sighs> I don't know. Again, it's a job we need to get around to. Much like this is the Mazda MX-5. Again, failed its MOT. Just needs some welding done, really. It's actually a really nice car, quite low mileage. It's 50, 60,000 miles of that. I think it's 55,000 miles. Um, but it's just needs a bit of welding on the sills. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a gift having a place like this to put cars, but it's a curse in the sense that they get put out here, out of sight, out of mind, and I'm sure you can probably tell, it's quite a lot of money's worth of cars just sat around waiting to be worked on. Yes, in theory, it uh, just moving on to the stuff that makes us money quickly makes more sense. And this is just like a collateral cost, but it is getting on my nerves. I really do want to get them sorted out. So I have said to the guys at the garage, we need to book out customer stuff. We don't want to look at it for till the new year maybe, so we can work our way through this. 
This little DS3, you might have seen that before as well, that has a snap cam belt. We bought that off the customer, they brought it into us, find out, you know, what's wrong with it? And we said, well, we've snapped your cam belt and the engine's knackered. We gave them 300 quid for it and we were going to get Steph to do the work. Again, it's just time, but it doesn't really cost me much to sit there 300 quid because if we fix it up, we can probably get two and a half grand for it. We might spend, you know, let's say spend 700 quid on parts and it owes us a thousand pounds plus the labour. It's still worth doing, isn't it? So I'm hanging on to it, but I probably need to start being a bit more ruthless. Then we have, of course, our 7 Series that we uh, plasti dipped and then drew all over, which I think looks quite cool. I wanted to do some kind of road trips and things in this, but again, just finding the time just hasn't happened. So it can't sit here forever, just waiting on me to have time to do a road trip. Well, we might do a road trip with something else, different vehicles anyway. So I actually quite like it. I really like driving it. It's super comfortable. We've put a nice Alcantara steering wheel and everything in it now. Uh, I probably just need to peel this wrap off, start again. Maybe plasti dip it in something else because it had a bit of a nasty rear quarter. Maybe I'll take it off and paint it. But again, it probably owes me, it owes me under £2,000, I think, to be fair. But that's probably all it's ever going to be worth. So it's tricky to know what to do with it. Tempted to keep it as it is, but it just doesn't get used. Probably don't want to use this in MT runner because it takes up so much space. It, you can park three smart cars in the space you can park that. So, yeah, tricky. Too many toys and projects and things like that. We're all guilty of it, aren't we? I'm just guilty on it on like a times 10 scale, probably. Then we've got the Antara. That's one that Sophie's selling. That's the one that's had the prop removed. You may have seen that video. If you haven't, I get Toby to put it here. Um, one that Sophie bought. Props been taken out, or I bought. She put it in the watch list. I bid on it. I can't remember how it happened. Uh, that's up for sale at the moment. So hopefully she can sell that as a kind of cheap family run around. They sold it as a two wheel drive version. So, you know, hopefully people won't be that bothered that it's only front wheel drive. Of course, we have our fabled Honda Civic Type R, which is now dead. It runs no more. The masters of having zero mechanical sympathy, Josh and Macaulay, killed it. Um, and I don't know what to do with it. I might just strip it for parts. We could try and fix the engine, but look how much work we've already got before we start getting into playing around with toys stuff. It's, it's done its money's worth, really. Uh, it's, it was a 200 and 15,000 mile Type R. We had a good handful of track days out of it, driving real hard amongst like four or five of us at a time. So it's done pretty well, really. Um, you might be best off just selling it for parts or just, I know someone had to come and buy it for 500 quid and take it away. I might do that. I don't know. I just don't think it's worth spending money on fixing it up when we could just buy a different car, use something like that. Audi TT, for example, only cost us 500 quid. So yeah, the future's not bright for this one, unfortunately, but I don't know what to do with it. Look at the Starlings, a murmur. They're gone. Then we have my cheap 750 pound Freelander. Look at this bad boy. It looks like it's been up to some real adventures, doesn't it? Because it has, along with the little Suzuki Grand Vitara as well, that's had a front end bump. That wasn't us but it, we did cover it in mud. We took these two and a Jeep Cherokee that I've got as well. That's not here, that's over at the garage, that's missing. As is the Chrysler Crossfire, as is a little 100 pound smart car, as is other bits and pieces that are over at the Barrow Motors that could be here that would add to this problem that we've got here. So there are plenty of others, but yes, we took these off-roading. There's gonna be a really good video coming out of that. That was a load of fun. We're all kind of hooked on that now, want to do more of it. In fact, Macaulay wants to do a trade now with this, with his Mercedes, so that he has an off-roader he can use. So we are going to figure that out. I think I'll clean up the Grand Vitara, maybe get a new bonnet for it or something. It's, I mean, to be fair, I paid 250 quid plus fees for this, with the sole purpose of taking it off-road, which is what we've done. It survived could give it a clean up and sell it for 500 quid. It's probably the simplest thing to do, isn't it? It's not worth the effort when we've got so much other stuff to do. 
So that is about it. Of course, there's a couple other buildings over there. There's another little storage area that's got other stuff in. There's the camper van over there, but that's all just kind of personal stuff. This is what you want to see. This is the, you know, the work related stuff. Obviously we're working on getting the Navara and the new green truck sign written up. We've got air suspension to fit to both of those as well. We need to do some stuff for the trailers and then we'll have our transport fleet. We'll kind of bring them all down here at some point and give you a rundown, do a video of that. There might be some individual videos on some of these things like the S-Class where it's collapsed suspension. We'll try and do some updates on that. And there's always the weekly video where you see the farm probably quite frequently. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so that you get a notification as soon as any of these future videos come out. Of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Check out my website, shiftingmetal.co.uk. It's got all of our sponsor discounts on there, including the very handy vehicle score. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.